For a while now, Tesla has been the number one electric car brand in Australia. In fact, the Model 3 outsells its nearest rival by nearly 10 times. But now Hyundai have come along to upset the Apple cart with the Ionic 5. And it's brilliant. Despite its shape, this is not a small car. The Ionic 5 is actually marketed by Hyundai as an SUV. And while it could be fair to say that its lines might have been inspired by the Honda e, it has taken the concept of a cute, small, urban EV and turned it into something that's actually really quite practical. And this is an amazing looking car. The number of people who have stopped and talked to me even today while filming this review and looked at this car while we've been in traffic is just insane. More than any other car I've reviewed, in fact. This design actually pays homage to a car that Hyundai released in the 1970s called the Pony. The Pixel is a recurring design theme throughout this car. You'll notice them dotted throughout the design, most notably here at the front in these LED light clusters where the daytime driving lights double as turn indicators. We've also got another bank of lights here at the front that you can't actually see during the day at all. They light up at night. And there's two doors down the bottom here that open and close to help improve this car's aerodynamics. In profile, you really do get a much better look at just how big this car is. I mean, it's nearly four and a half metres long and Hyundai marketed it as an SUV. I really like these wheel arches. I don't know if they did this deliberately or not, but the design of them kind of reminds me of the gun barrel logo at the beginning of the James Bond movies. And these wheels, whilst I think they'd be a nightmare to keep clean, I think are the best looking on any EV on the market. The door handles sit flush with the metal and they pop out when you give them a little touch as long as you've got the key in your pocket or they just pop out on their own when you get near to the car. And this 45 degree angle at the back, I was talking to a Korean gentleman earlier today who was informing me that as part of Korean culture, to show respect to somebody in a more senior position than you, you bow to them and he thought that maybe this could be paying tribute to that. At the back we've got loads more pixels for the rear light clusters, a powered tailgate with a 560 litre storage space underneath it, a flat floor, not a lot of extra storage space under the floor though unfortunately, but there is a tyre mobility kit and a cargo blind too. The charge port is here at the back. How long does it take to charge? Well, that depends on how you do it. If you can find a 350 kilowatt supercharger, you're looking at about 17 minutes to get it to 80%. If you've got a lot more time and only a three pin plug at home, you're looking at about 31 hours to get it to 100%. Look, most of the charges you're gonna find around the place in car parks, that kind of thing, will get it to 80% in about an hour. There's two versions of the Ionic 5 available, a single motor rear wheel drive version and this dual motor all wheel drive, which has 225 kilowatts of power and 605 newton meters of torque, has zero to 100 time of 5.2 seconds. So it gives you a good kick in the guts when you put your foot down. A full charge will get you 430 kilometers of range. Now I'm standing here next to the engine bay like there's something to show you. Well, there isn't really because the motors are actually underneath the car, but there is the frunk here, which houses the charger which plugs into your wall at home and well that's about it really. The interior while feeling quite futuristic is a bit more conventional and a bit more familiar than that of a Tesla. It's very light and bright and there's a great mix of materials. We've got leather and soft touch plastics and even some recycled paper door inserts here on the interior door panels. And rather than a normal glove box, we've actually got a drawer up the front here. We've got twin 12.3 inch screens here in the cabin. The center one runs a pretty normal version of the standard Hyundai center console screen software. If you've driven a Hyundai in the last couple of years, you'll feel pretty at home with this. They have made a few tweaks to it to account for the fact that this is an EV. There's Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, but in a not so futuristic move, you will still need a USB cable to use them. And there's also an eight speaker Bose sound system, which sounds pretty good. Shortcut buttons for the infotainment underneath that, and then a big touch capacitive bit of plastic here to run the climate controls. Now, one thing to keep in mind with that is that if you've got the fan up on high and you're going hard on the air conditioning, it will drain your battery a lot more quickly. So just make sure you keep it in auto as much as possible. 
Then we've got a big open area underneath that, which you can make even bigger by sliding this whole center console island back even further. There's a 12 volt outlet and a USB that are well out of reach while you're driving and another storage space down there. Cup holders with two more USBs, wireless phone charging in the center here and another big storage space down the bottom with a nice leather armrest, which has got a small storage tray. The 12.3 inch digital instrument cluster is unique to this car and I think it's fantastic. I really like what they've done with this. It's very different. I really like the design. You can customize it and change it depending on the drive mode you're in. My one complaint with it though, or actually it's two complaints, is that one, there's no maps and two, the speedo is up here in the top left hand corner and it's very easy to block it with your hand while you're driving, making it a bit tricky to see at a glance what your speed is. I wish you could put it in the middle, but unfortunately that's not an option. The steering wheel is unique to this car. I've never seen one like it before. I actually quite like it. It has a really good feel. It's leather wrapped with stitching. No Hyundai logo on it, just four pixels there on the uh, center of the wheel. And then we've got the drive mode button here. You can change between the three drive modes of normal, sport and eco, and then also so controls for the adaptive cruise control and the audio system. A couple of paddle shifters behind the wheel here that control the amount of regenerative braking from the electric motors. And then we've got the gear shifter, which is this big thick stalk here underneath the turn indicator. And I don't love it. It's very easy to accidentally select drive when you're meant to put it in reverse. I've made that mistake a couple of times, which is a bit of a problem when you're doing a bit of low speed maneuvering, like getting in and out of a tight car parking spot. I just don't love the way this works. I would prefer something a little bit more conventional for that. The seats are leather and white in this case, which might be a bit of a problem keeping them clean, but they look really nice. Now there's an infinite amount of electric adjustment. They're also heated and ventilated. And there's also this lounge mode designed to keep you comfortable and relaxed while your car is recharging. So you just push the button here on the side of the seat and the seat reclines very nicely. There's even an extra leg rest here and suddenly it feels like you're flying business class. Well, maybe business class as it was maybe 15 years ago. This is actually quite comfortable. And then the push of another button, you're back to your normal driving position. The back seat of the Ionic 5 is actually very comfortable. There's a good amount of knee room. I'm nowhere near the seat in front of me and I'm 190 centimeters tall, which is good. Uh, toe room, bit of a squash, but I do feel like I'm sitting up very high. I feel like I'm sitting higher than the front seats, which is a bit weird. And there's not a lot of headroom with my hair touching the headliner there. Uh, these outboard seats are heated. There's also two USB ports down here in the middle and an extra storage space as well. We've got air vents here in the V pillars. Rear seat passengers also get window shade for a bit of extra privacy. The controls for the heated seats are just here on the armrests and we've got another armrest here in the middle with two cup holders. The Ionic 5 is a bit of a soft rider. It does tend to glide over everything very smoothly, which I suppose in part goes some way to justifying its slightly higher price tag. But along with that also comes steering that is a little bit vague and a bit numb. You can firm it up a little bit in sport mode, but it doesn't really make a huge difference. Zero to 100 in the Hyundai Ioniq 5 is 5.2 seconds on paper. Let's see how that feels in the real world. I've got everything switched on sport. And here we go. <laughs> Wow, that was pretty rapid. It's just so immediate. Like it actually took me by surprise then. I wasn't quite ready for that. In a normal internal combustion engine, even, you know, a BMW that I was reviewing last week that had a zero to 100 time of three and a half seconds, there's still that little bit of sort of, you know, spool up from the turbo that takes a little while to kick in, but this is just immediate. But being a two-ton SUV, when you do little things like that, you don't feel like the car is going to lose traction or take off into the air. It's very well planted to the road, even in the wet. And the upside of having all that torque on tap whenever you need it is that you can really weave in and out of traffic very quickly because you can get out of the way faster than just about anybody else. There's four levels of regenerative braking available on the paddles here on the steering wheel. And when you've got it in full eye pedal mode, which is the most intense, you can do full one pedal driving with this car and in theory not have to touch the brake. Although, I mean, there are gonna be times when you'll need to stop quicker than the engine can slow you down. But it is a really well done system. 
And watching the digital graphics in front of me, it actually becomes almost like a game to see how much time I can spend regenerating battery power as opposed to expending it. Hyundai have learnt something from Tesla about cruise control systems because the adaptive cruise control in this car is so simple to turn on. It's just one button push and it sets itself to the speed that you're currently travelling at and keeping a good distance from the car in front of us. I don't think there would be any car in Hyundai's stable that gets as much attention as this one does. <laughs> I've had so many people pointing at me, coming to talk to me, looking at this car as they're driving past. It's, this is what it was like when Teslas first appeared on our roads. Now, they're a dime a dozen, no one looks twice. It's all about the Ionic 5. <laughs> My God, some kid was just filming me with his phone. I feel like I'm a movie star driving this. This car's battery is very impressive. Uh, when I picked it up, it was fully charged, had about 430 k's of range. I've been daily driving it for the last week, running errands, taking the kids to and from school, nothing out of the ordinary. I've still got 270 k's of range left. Based off that, I'd only ever need to charge this car once every two weeks. It's really good. It is a very quiet and refined cabin too. I mean, there is very little noise from the outside world coming in. Even noisy cars don't really sort of penetrate this cabin too much. So Hyundai have done a really good job in making this a very refined, comfortable, almost luxury car interior. At around 75 grand for this all wheel drive version, the Ionic 5 is not the cheapest EV on the road. I honestly think that if Hyundai can sort out the supply issues, then a cheaper version of this car could seriously take on the Tesla Model 3.